Good day to everyone who is watching right now. And I would like to welcome all of you to our week four to five lessons. By the way, this is Miss Hazel Grace M. Aguilar, your online learning coordinator and the SHS coordinator of AMA University. So before we proceed with our topic for this day, let's just uh, play a quick game. Okay, I will show you a jumble letter and you need to tell me what does uh, it mean. Okay, are you ready? So for the first word, K. So the correct answer here is product. Okay, how about with the second word? Okay, there's a C, E, S, O, U, S, R, E, R. Okay, so the correct answer here is resources. Okay, how about with the third word? Okay, it looks like engagement, but it is not engagement. Okay, the correct answer is management. Yan. Okay, how about with the next word? Okay. What do you think is the answer here? Okay, the correct answer is overhead. Okay, so let us uh, go now with the next word. How about this one? Okay, the correct answer is inventory. Okay, let's check what are the answers. So the first word is product, second is resources, third management, fourth overhead. And the last is inventory. Very good. And thank you for those who participated with this quick game or short game. Okay. So for our objectives for today, at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to define business, enumerate the different forms of business, distinguish the difference between each forms of business. Okay, so without further ado, let us all start. Again, forms of business organization. But let us define first what is a business. So business is defined as an organization or enterprising entity engaged in commercial, industrial, or professional activities. Businesses, businesses can be for profit entities or they can be non-profit organizations that operate to fulfill a charitable mission or further a social cause. So when we see non-profit organization, it is the foundation. Foundation that uh, serves to help our less fortunate um, member of the society. And the term business also refers to the organized efforts and activities of individuals to produce and sell goods and services for for profit. So this is for the businesses that was created to um, earn profit, okay, or to um, provide profit. Okay. And so the first forms of business organization is the sole proprietorship. So it is a business owned by one person. And these are the advantages. By the way, when we say sole proprietorship, example of it is the sorry, sorry store or even the um, small business out there. So the advantages are the following. Easy formation. It is easy to form. Next, direct motivation because no one would uh, do or no one will be uh, busy in the business only the owner, okay? Next is better control because you are the only one who's controlling the business. So there's no um, conflict involved or you don't need to ask other people about the business. And same with number four, promptness in decision-making. Because you're the only one who's deciding for the business. Easy this solution, so... Uh, if it is easy to form, it is also too easy to dissolve. And next advantages is no corporate tax payments. And here's the advan disadvantages. So first, limited resources because the owner is only one. 
So when we say resources, it is the money, energy, or the managerial skill that could be used for the business. Number two, limited managerial capability because there's only one in the business. Unlimited liability it means if you borrowed money from other people for your business, then those people will only uh, look for you, okay? Even though you, the business is already dissolved. Number four, uncertainty of continuity. Okay. Because of the limited resources, limited managerial capability, so the chance of this business to go on for a long time is um, impossible or nearly impossible. Okay, let's now proceed with the next forms of business organization, which is partnership. A contract whereby two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry into a common fund with the intention of dividing profits among themselves. The formation of the partnership requires some form of a written or oral agreement between the partners. So this is, by the way, when we say partnership, we are not just talking about two people. Okay, it could be two or more who's sharing their money, property, resources to form the business. And these are the advantages of partnership, easy to organize, unlimited liability, huge resources, because um, you have partners who could give um, who or who could distribute money. Better management, of course, because you're need you are not now the only one who will decide better distribution of profits. And now let's now proceed with the disadvantage and limited liability of the partners. So same with sole proprietorship, even though the business is already dissolved. So the creditors could um, look for the owners of the um, partnership business. Partners are solidarity liable it lacks stability it could also um, arise conflict between the partners okay and that's partnership and let's now proceed with the corporation a company or group of people authorized to act as single as a single entity or legal person and recognized as such in law so here's the advantages, limited liability for the owners, because if they have creditors, the creditors would um, look for the business itself rather than the owners. Okay? Because there's a lot of owners of a corporation and shares of ownership are transferable, even though you're the one who started the business, but uh, it you could share okay, or you could transfer the ownership with other people or if they will buy a bigger share of the business. Continuity, of course, um, compared to sole proprietorship and partnership, corporation tends to continue uh, longer than the earlier form of business organization. Number four, it attracts more investors, of course, because uh, compared to partnership and sole proprietorship, corporation is a lot more stable than the two. And centralized management, and let's now proceed with the disadvantages. Incorporation is costly, of course. Corporation are highly regulated because we are not just talking about um, um thousands of money but in corporation we are talking about million or billion of um, money okay in the business so that's why corporation are highly regulated limited liability may discourage creditors it may it is not easy to dissolve of course because it is a big company and sometimes they need to um, declare bankruptcy before closing or dissolving the business. And of course, because 
corporation has a lot of employees. And let's now proceed with the number four forms of business organization. Cooperative. So it is a business organization owned by a group of individuals and is operated for their mutual benefit. So the, verso, the person making up the group are called members. And it is also a separate legal entity and members, directors, managers, and employers are not liable for any debt incurred unless they are the result of recklessness, negligence, or fraud. And it has also democratic style of management. So let us now proceed with the advantages of cooperative. One, generally inexpensive to register. All members must be active in the cooperative. Members have equal vote at a general meeting regardless of their level or of investment or involvement. So how about the disadvantage? One, as a cooperative are formed to provide service to members rather than a return on investment. Of course, if, if it will not be balanced, diba? if the cooperative just keep on providing service, so the continuity of the cooperative might not be possible. That's why um, they should balance it. Number two, there's usually limited distribution of profits to members. And number three, because of the uh, lower, because the cooperative tends to provide service rather than to um, create profit. So there is usually limited distribution of profits to members. And members providing greater involvement or investment than others will still get one vote. So, of course, if you're the if you're the one member who's always um DC or managing the cooperative, of course, it is an advantage for you because um though you want to implement a certain rule or regulations about the cooperative still uh your voice is just considered a one voice or one vote okay and and there's just like what it is here it, there's a democratic style of management so you cannot impose what you like even though you're the one who's um bc operating the cooperative and requires ongoing education programs for members, of course. So that's the four forms of business organization. So first is the sole proprietorship owned by one person only, partnership two or more. Cooperative, it's um, um, considered as a legal entity or one um, entity and the, bis and the cooperative, a business organization, owned by a group of individuals. So let us, let us now proceed with the types of business according to its activities. So the first one is the service business. Is this the simplest type of business which performs service for a fee to a client or customer? So sample professional teacher okay, or tutor. So they are providing tutorial service for their customer. Repair shop like... Um, repair of shoes or any um, anything that could be repaired. Banks, of course, brokers, because they are not selling. Um, it means they are just in the middle of the owner of an asset and then the one who will buy. Consultants and school. So they are, these are the type of business who, who is providing service. So let us now proceed with the second one, which is the merchandising business. So this type of business entity is in the buy and sell business. The company buys from several vendors, just like in Divisoria, and provides a central purchasing point where customers can purchase everything in one stop. So inventory represents the primary assets of a merchandising company. So uh, if you can remember, inventory was the one of the words that we guessed during the first um, part of this lesson. So inventory are your stocks or the products that you will sell. For example, in one shoes um, store, so every shoes that you can see there that is not yet sold that is there, 
inventory. So there are two types of inventory. So the first one is the wholesaler, which buys large quantities of finished goods directly from the manufacturer or importers, then resells the same to the different merchandiser. So bar buys large quantities. So just like the stores in the Visoria were in, they will buy a large entities from China or from other uh, part of the world. Then they are going to sell it to the Re retailer, right? and then the retailer sells the goods directly to the end customer. So when we say retailer, these are um, the convenience store, the Sari Sari store, or even the owner of the online shops or online seller. Okay. And let's now proceed with the um, last one, last types of business according to activities, which is the manufacturing business. Manufacturers are also called fabricators or producers or processors. The process of converting raw materials, components of, or parts into finished goods that met a customer's expectation or specifications. So what are the important things about manufacturing business? So first is the raw materials. These are the materials that is to be processed into a finished product. So what are the examples of raw materials? The tree, the tree that could be formed uh, into a lot of things like paper, furniture, drawer, even bed, and there's a lot more. And there's also direct and indirect materials. When we say direct material, materials that are part of the final product. So for example, the paper. So what are the other products that, that were used or utilized to produce the finished product. So that, that is called as direct material. But when we say indirect material, materials that are not part of the final product, but we use during uh, processing the final product. And there's also direct labor, wages of those persons whose efforts directly affect the quality or other characteristics of the products man manufactured. So for example, the factory worker or the one who's uh, processing the final product. But overhead, wages of those who are not directly involved in the manufacturing process, but help in the process of making the final product. For example, the people in the accounting department or the purchasing department or procurement department who they were the one who um, purchased the, the, the materials, the direct materials, and then from them, the direct labor will do their part in finishing the product. Okay, and whether they are directly part or not, uh, or indirectly part of creating the final product, but still they play their important role in making the product. Um, by the way, what are the examples of um, manufacturing business? It could be um, Rubina Corporation, and Procter and Gamble, Samsung, because they are creating some, um, the Samsung gadgets. Okay, and I think that's all for this um, week. And thank you to all who listen to this video okay and hope to see you for our next lesson goodbye and thank you everyone